The body's innate ability at the cellular level to nourish itself, to balance itself, and to defend itself never ceases to amaze me. And that ability to self-defend is expressly showcased in today's interview with critical care physician, Dr. Roger Schwelt. Dr. Schwelt worked to combat COVID infection in intensive care during the pandemic. Like no other event in recent history, the coronavirus pandemic brought the spotlight over how we understand, prevent, and treat viral infection. Amid the confusion and controversy surrounding different treatments, one particular view rose to prominence, the idea that we need to support the body's innate immunity. Interferon proteins are a potent instrument of this innate immunity. Created within our cells, their purpose is to block virus cell production. Today, we'll learn how interferon was used to counter coronavirus and how it was used to counter the Spanish flu over 100 years ago. We'll look at the techniques used back then and now to raise interferon levels in cells. And we'll look at how we can do the same on a basic level when we feel infection coming on. Welcome to Vital Signs, where we learn how to get healthier from all angles, from the biochemical and nutritional to the things we do that nourish our minds and our souls. I'm Brendan Fallon. Dr. Schwalt's current practice is in Beaumont, California, where he is a critical care physician, pulmonologist, and sleep physician at Optum, California. He is co-founder of MedCram, which has garnered over one and a half million YouTube followers through demystifying medical concepts. Dr. Schwalt, thank you so much for joining me on Vital Signs again. It's great to be here, Brandon. Thanks for inviting me. We know that interferons were a factor in people's immunity against coronavirus, and they can also be a barrier against other infections. What are interferons exactly? Yeah, so interferons are these chemicals, uh, natural substances that your body produces. They're sort of uh, messengers, uh, cell phone messages, if you will, between the different aspects of your immune system, and uh, specifically something called the innate immune system. So if you divide the immune system into two different tasks or two different aspects, there is the aspect of our immune system, which we're all familiar with, where a virus or some sort of foreign substance comes into your body, your body recognizes it, and then makes an antibody to it that's very specific to that disease, to that variant, if you will. And uh, if that virus were to come back uh, slightly mutated, that antibody would no longer be very effective against that virus. That whole aspect of our immune system is known as the adaptive immune system. And it's called that because it adapts to the different variants of a virus. We're not talking about that aspect of your immune system today. What we're talking about is a different aspect called the innate immune system. The innate immune system uses very broader aspects. It's able to recognize based on generalities what is, uh, what is self and what is non-self. And as a result of that, the types of tools that we will see in the innate immune system is very generalizable to all sorts of not only just variants, but even viruses. And one of those tools that we're talking about in the innate immune system is called interferon. Interferon is a substance that basically, it's well-named, it interferes with viral replication. And we're not just talking about a specific virus, we're talking about multiple viruses. So hepatitis C, for instance, is actually treated with high doses of interferon. And we can actually today cure chronic hepatitis C if we get enough, if we get a high enough dose of, of interferon. Um, but it also is, and as we'll show here in this, in this talk, we'll talk about uh, COVID-19, it's also effective against uh, multiple variants, in fact, all the variants of COVID-19. So again, the, the point here is interferon is a very broad, it's not specific to a variant, it's a very broad tool that our body has in the innate immune system to battle foreign invaders, especially viruses. It's a very fascinating aspect of, of what our body does naturally to defend itself. Being that the case, why do people still suffer to the degree they do with, with these different infections, with COVID-19 being a, a stellar example? Exactly. So that's a very insightful question. Like, if we have this great immune system, then why do people become infected? So uh, scientists have actually looked at this and uh, have come to this conclusion. Look, the, the body's immune system is so well adapted, so well tuned to deal with foreign invaders that the only hope that a foreign invader has of infecting the body is if they have a very specific 
mitigating mechanism to cripple one or more aspects of our immune system. If, if any self uh, respecting virus wants to infect a human body, it has to have a plan to get around, to work around the various aspects of the innate immune system. It's kind of like if you wanted to uh, rob a bank, you can't just walk in there and, and take out money. You have to have a plan, if you will, to get around the security guard, to get around the, the defense mechanisms. And what we're finding out is that if you look at the types of viruses that actually are successful at infecting human bodies, they all have a specific mechanism for crippling or disabling the body's innate immune system. And SARS-CoV-2 is, is no exception to this. Um, very early on in the pandemic, this is, we're talking about uh, in the early 2020s, there were papers that were published that looked at the forerunner of SARS-CoV-2, which was SARS-CoV-1. They had studied that very extensively back in 2002 when, it was, uh, when, when there was an epidemic of SARS. And what they had seen in that specific coronavirus was that, yes, there was a mechanism in that, uh, in that uh, virus to circumvent or to suppress the body's ability to make interferon. And in fact, this was confirmed later that uh, SARS-CoV-2, the disease or the virus that causes COVID-19, has been shown to have genes in it. And we can talk about those genes, specifically MAC1, has a specific gene that is there specifically to diminish, to negate, to uh, cripple the interferon response that the body has to get rid of this infection. Is this something that has developed in the, the coronavirus strain that it's gained this ability to, to get around the interferon? So this specific gene, MAC1, was present at, uh, in the very first iteration of SARS-CoV-2, and it was seen to be um, uh, at least present in some form in, in SARS. I haven't studied SARS as well to know, but there was just a recent paper, paper that was published this year in, in 2023 that took the SARS-CoV-2 virus and they specifically put deletions or they crippled the MAC1 gene, which is responsible for crippling the, uh, the immune response uh, in the body, the interferon response in the body. And what they found was when they infected the, uh, the cells in culture with this new strain of the virus, with this MAC1 gene crippled, that interferon responses uh, greatly increased and that the, the, the cell's immune response was able to create interferon at higher levels and they were able to uh, actually contain the virus much more easily than the wild type or the regular virus, which had the MAC1 gene intact. And so they concluded that MAC1 was one of the genes, at least, that was involved in the virulence or the ability of SARS-CoV-2 to infect the human body. Given that we had such a, a widespread exposure within the population to, to COVID, what accounts for the differences we saw in the way that it affected people, the different degrees of severity, uh, some people developing COVID, some people not developing it, and how does that relate to, to the innate immune system? Oh, that, yeah, so, so we can talk, oh, we, could, we could talk a long time about that, but to focus on the innate immune system, um, there are certain genetic types, first of all, there's certain genetic types of people that have difference in terms of the uh, issues of the uh, the genetics of how much they make in terms of the uh, the interferon but also in terms of the metabolic effects so we know that as people get older that we see that they have more issues with oxidative stress which is one of the effects of of covid and so as you get older uh, you might have more oxidative stress and therefore you'll be less likely to survive or to um, uh, to improve with a COVID-19 infection. And that might explain why we saw older people uh, dying at higher rates. But to focus in on your question about the innate immune system, we noticed, and there was, this was a paper that was published in Science, that specifically people who have higher levels of interferon secretion with a SARS-CoV-2 infection actually had better outcomes than those that had lower secretions of interferon. So if we had, uh, if we measured the outcomes, people with severe uh, COVID versus those with um, a mild COVID, 
what could be predictive of whether or not somebody got severe COVID versus mild was the type of interferon response that they actually had. So higher levels of interferon predicted a better outcome than those with lower level of interferon. That's fascinating to hear. And the obvious question is, how do people boost their interferon production? Yeah, a, a excellent question. So before we get to that, let me just, as a proof of concept, um, because people might say, well, association does not necessarily mean causation. So there was a paper that was published earlier this year in the New England Journal of Medicine that looked at the intervention of interferon in patients with COVID-19. So in other words, they took people with COVID-19 that were in that were in an outpatient setting in the emergency room or in a clinic or in an urgent care, and they gave them a single injection of interferon subcutaneously. And what they found was that this reduced the incidence of hospitalization afterwards by 50%. So this essentially, this randomized controlled trial showed that in fact, if you're able to increase interferon response in somebody with symptoms of COVID-19, um, then this could reduce the risk of hospitalization. And let me just say at this point that we don't, at least I don't believe, I don't believe science believes that interferon is specific for COVID-19. So in other words, the effects of this are even farther reaching. So if you were to come down, I would believe with any type of uh, infectious disease, fevers, and you don't know if this is COVID-19 or RSV or influenza, that having an interferon response, which is so general and part of this innate immune system, I think is extremely beneficial uh, for, for survival and, and recovery.